gentleman who spoke, uh, Mr. Alexander, um, I want to I want to agree with him. I, my spirit wants to, but it's not the truth. It's not equal protection of the law. Because the fact of the matter is... Yes. The law officials knew six weeks before what was going to happen. Yeah. Right. So as they're being criticized now for a slow reaction, it wasn't a slow reaction. It was a deliberate looking away. Right. Right. The same looking away we see across this country. In 2015, Martise Johnson, a black student at the University of Virginia, who actually lived on the lawn, one of the highest honors any student can achieve, was attacked by police, beat down on the corner. National headlines. We went back for Black Alumni Weekend, and there were visuals. So again, when people are saying they can't believe this is not our country, we know the history of this country. Let's, yeah, we, we can be patriotic. Probably we can choose to is. love this place yeah. anyway. Probably but please, let's is. not be naive. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not be foolish here. Yeah. And the truth is, we believe in freedom of speech, equal protection of the law. But anybody that's raising a Confederate flag, why is, not, why is that not viewed as a treacherous act? We're talking about a Confederacy that seceded from this country. A Confederacy that was defeated. Why do we, again, put on these rose-colored glasses and pretend like we're not seeing what's happening right in front of us? Anybody that's raising that flag is un-American. Yeah. living in. I'm not surprised that the orange buffoon didn't denounce the violence that he has incited. And I won't even give him the dignity of saying his name. Because again, I'm a follower of Christ and I understand the power of words. It was his buffoonery, this media circus that he created that got him in the White House in the first place. So how many times do we want to say his name? Even I, I see alum all across the country unifying and they're saying who's against hate? Unite against hate. Why do we want to keep using the word hate? Who is for love? Yeah. Who is for peace? Let's be very deliberate with our verbiage. are the times that we're living in when our president and his administration are white supremacist sympathizers at best neo-nazis at worst and here we are continuing to be reactive and I don't stand here to pretend like I have all the answers but what I do have are some questions that I'm hoping that you guys can help me figure out all right so we know the history of this country, and we know how race has been used as a distraction and a disguise for the real issue, which is class, which is money, right? That's what happened with the Bacon's Rebellion, when you had poor whites and poor blacks unifying against the white elite, and all of a sudden there was a surge of new propaganda. White people were reminded that they're white. So regardless if they had less money in their pocket than me, they could look at me and feel a false sense of superiority. Right. That's what we're continuing to see. Yeah. I'm amazed by people who live in areas with absolutely no job opportunities. I'm talking about my rural white brothers and sisters who are unifying around the orange buffoon. Are you stupid? Yeah. This is a man who's sending your jobs away. But he gives you this inflammatory language to make you feel that you're better than me or a Muslim or a gay. So then the question is all of us, right? All of us others. So in this era of resistance, intersectionality, as the brother said earlier, we have issues within ourselves. We're seeing that tonight, right? But at the same time, we don't have time to address those issues. It doesn't seem like. So let's figure out something that we can truly rally around. Because the truth of the matter is, I don't need white validation. I have a strong community behind me. I know my people. I feel the power of my ancestors and my veins. What I do need is people who share the same dreams, the same economic opportunities, the same economic worries to rally around that. Because they want to make America great again. Meaning, they want to create more opportunities for the white male elites. And unfortunately, 
the most marginalized amongst us are buying into that propaganda. So again, as the, the left, as the lights, as the woman so eloquently said, what are we going to rally around? What is our narrative going to be? That's right. Again, I have more questions than I have answers. But what I do know, this very place was a spot of Occupy Wall Street years ago, right? Again, more distraction. Where did that go? We need to build an economic base. We have many differences amongst us. This is the history of our country. Again, we're not going to be naive. We're going to acknowledge that. But the truth of the matter is there's not enough time or space for us to deal with all of our different issues, all of the slashes, black, woman, gay, Muslim, male. What is that going to do? What can unify us? We have to come together for our own opportunities. And as we're facing oppression, extinction, violence, are rallies enough? No. The Charlottesville clergy before the um, rally yesterday, they asked anybody who had not been trained in nonviolent resistance to not attend. They were talking to the counter protesters. I thought that was very interesting that this is what is being posed again in 2017. We've seen this in history before. So when we decide that we're going to bear arms, we're going to stand up for this fight, bear arms figuratively, I mean, in this instance. Are we truly prepared to die? Are we thinking that enough videos of police sanctioned homicide, enough videos of cars ramming into nonviolent crime uh, crowds, is that going to be enough to appeal to the moral conscience of this country as it was in years past? But that was before social media. That was before there was so much noise to cut through. That was before there was such good entertainment. Because 10 o'clock, I'm watching Insecure. Right. I don't know I'm still going to be all about about it, right? right? That's what the reality is. These are the times that we're living in. What's going to sustain us? That's true. So I have another question. I was baffled that the murder of Philando Castile did not rally the NRA. Yeah. Hear me out. Yeah. Here is a man that was killed because he was a registered gun owner, right? This is a Second Amendment issue if there is no Second Amendment issue. And yet the NRA is silent about that. And a month ago, they're issuing videos to incite their following to violence. Y'all saw that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do we think? Do we need to arm ourselves? Virginia and Texas are open carry states. What would happen if they did what the Panthers did when they stormed the Sacramento Senate? If there were thousands of black people marching with rifles, would that incite a war or would that back these people down? War. I'm not sure, but I know that continuing to rally under this auspice of love without answering those questions it's foolish. Right. Right. So as we go on in our individual lives, I'm, I'm hoping that all of our actions, all of our movements can be ministry, that we can live the words that we've shared today. And again, I don't have the answers, but I thank you for allowing me the space to ask the questions. So the last speaker that we're going to have tonight to close out before Ashley comes and give everybody a farewell is uh, Myra Ahmed. She's going to represent our Muslim community. We need to